chatting with you guys. I just forgot to get this out. glazing process and all right one last thing sorry you guys I do have to get some fresh foil on my palette. So do you guys all use aluminum foil? Well some of you use the stay wet palette now. But uh, what do you guys do with your aluminum foil when you're done? I put mine in the recycling bin. Okay so they take it with your recycling? Awesome. Yeah, I take it in and I actually get paid for it. Oh, I take it a, into the recycling center. That's a good idea. Probably use it, probably use it a lot more than all of it. they take it with the paint on Yeah, they do. The yeah, it's just a different oh, grade of aluminum. But yeah, they do. You probably go through an immense amount. I do. I have like these bags full of it. I just take it in. I used to work at a recycling center years ago, so that's how I found out that they take it. One of the jobs I did before my art took off. Mm -hmm. Dangerous place. I mean, well, I just yeah, I know they're real picky about plastic containers being cleaned out and all that, so I didn't know if they would take it with paint on it. Right. Okay, so now we're going to begin now? the glazing yes. process, and remember the first step really is to look at your reference photo and just study it a little bit. I mean, you kind of want to plot out your strategy, what you're going to do, how you're going to paint it. And the first thing you want to do is observe the value structure. And that's just the overall sense of light and darks. Can you guys see this image okay? Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. Um, and so I want to decide right away, probably the most important thing to decide is the subject's face going to be either lighter or darker than the background. Because you might have a portrait where, you know, the background is quite light, whether it's kind of a light gray or whatever color background, or they're outside, and their skin tones are dark enough that they're darker, then you want to plan for that. Um, if their faces are lighter, then you want to plan for that. So. Basically, the idea is to um, put down a glaze right away that will begin to build a value structure, the overall sense of light and dark. So in this particular image, um, her face is significantly lighter than the background. His, not quite so much. However, he has that nice highlight on the right-hand side that will help him to stand out. The little halo around him is because I use Photoshop, so I'm not going to have that really bright line around him like that in the actual painting. Um, but what I would want to do is get some contrast immediately between the subjects and the background. Usually, in most of my portraits, I work on the background first. That's not always the case. That can depend on whether your background is light. If the background is very light, and closer to a, to a white kind of a uh, color, and then their clothing was darker, then I would begin to paint their clothing probably first. And you know, if the head filled the whole uh, image area or a good portion of it, and they had dark hair, I would begin to block in the values through the dark hair, block in the shadows on their face if they have dark shadows. So you want to think of it as being not just, oh, the hair is black or the hair is brown. I need to glaze that in. But if they have a dark shadow under their chin where that's as dark as their hair, you want to glaze that in at the same time. And so uh, that will really, really help. All right, so I'm going to do a little less talking and more painting. I want to kind of set the stage for support and I'll put down a you know nice amount of matte medium like that just kind of in the center or lower center of my palette and usually I'm going to work with um, the 
strategy is uh, simple to complex. So I'm going to mix raw umber dark and ultramarine blue and block in the background. Um, I'm going to start with ultramarine blue just because it's up higher and I think I need a little more blue than the brown. So I just take a little dab on the corner of my brush just like that. And I just kind of set it off to the side of the mixing area. And then I take a little bit of raw or dark and set that to the side. And I just kind of mix them together like this and then pull them into the matte medium. And I don't mix into the whole thing at once. I just start into a little corner and I turn my brush over like this like, and swirl it and try to distribute the pigment onto the bristles as evenly as I can. And then I start mixing it in more. And so I'm trying to make a glaze that's very, very light, very translucent. And translucent is just a word that means halfway between opaque and transparent. Transparent would be like this, this bottle, you can see through it. It's very clear like any glass, anything that the light can shine through completely. Uh, translucent would be if I were to add paint to this, you know, there would still be enough water you could see through it, but not perfectly clear. All right. and this, of course, would be opaque. You really can't see through it at all. So we're trying to make a translucent glaze, and we want it to be about 90 to 95 percent matte medium to about 5 to 10 percent paint. So really, a small amount of paint. And I can put this on the white card. I don't know if you guys can see that. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. Now the reason I have the black line in here is because then you can see the opacity. Um, you're seeing a little bit of gray just because of the matte medium, but this really doesn't have any white, so it's going to uh, drive pretty dark on that black line. And then what I want to do is just start in the upper left corner, generally. I like to start on the left-hand side because I'm right-handed, so it might be different for you guys that are left-handed. Um, and I like to start in the darkest area and work my way out to the light. So down here in this corner between their faces, it's, it's lighter, right? I don't want to start there. I want to start where it's darker and work my way into the lighter area. So. I'm going to apply this glaze in the upper left corner. And always keep a wet edge. You notice how I'm brushing in a couple different directions, kind of smoothing it out. Just have to get a good angle on this. And I quick go back and I swirl some more glaze onto the brush. Now I'm just going to do one glaze. I'm not going to try to develop any shading. Right now my goal is just to put down this grayish tone in the background as smoothly as I can. This is where it can get a little trickier, you know, to do it without having a ton of brush strokes. And you do want to have a lot of the mixture on your brush. That does help you to get it a little bit smoother. I'm going to stand up just so I can see if there's some glare on here. So now I'm just kind of cutting it around her hair. Don't be afraid to go over on top of the people, top of your subjects, because you can always paint on top of the hair and fix it up, but if you have a white halo around, it's really hard to match that into the background. So I know you were taught, you know, when you did coloring books to not go outside the lines. But here it's okay to go a little bit outside the lines. Here I want to be a little more careful to cut it around his head. You know, because his head is a little bit lighter and it's a warmer color.
you guys want to grab your chairs, I should have mentioned that if you want to get chairs. I'm good standing. All right, so here it's a little bit lighter on that side. But I'm just going to do this, uh, this gray tone throughout. And again, just establish that contrast between the foreground and background. Now here's the thing. As we as we get into um, his clothing, I'm just going to actually keep this glaze going onto his clothing. And the reason for that is because his clothing is gray. This color is close enough that it'll work. <clears throat> Even though I'm going to have the background be a little bit more bluish, this color is close enough I can I can alter the color of his clothing because I'm going to be doing many, many layers. And so I can add a glaze that has a little more of a brownish color and get this to where it should be. But I figure why, you know, since I have this on my brush, I might as well utilize it and just keep this going all the way throughout. And I'm going, you know, really light because it's so much easier when it's light to, to not make it look blotchy. That's one of the biggest things I think you know, we struggle with is having blotchy glazes or blotchy applications of paint. But notice how I'm using you know, brush strokes in many different directions and I kind of smooth it out vertically. Again, I have a huge amount on my brush because then I can push that in and really get it to cover and get into the grooves and the weave of the canvas you'll really struggle if you only have a little bit on there and you're trying to push it in and push it in. That, that's when it gets blotchy. Just have that large amount and then just smooth it out. You don't push it in at all, too? What's that? You don't push it into the canvas like you normally would? Like I normally would, I guess? Um, yeah, you can. Definitely push it and have more of a perpendicular. I was talking and I realized I need to leave off on its beams because that's kind of a bright blue. And I don't want that to uh, get affected by the gray. Now with her jeans being that darker, will they be, uh, will you have the gray on them to start with? On what? On her jeans, her hair. Yep, okay. you bet. Yep. So. Anything that's the same time, I guess. Yep. So I'm just going to keep flowing this way and we'll go back over here and meet up. So notice how where I stopped off here, I stopped off in a small area. That way it's so much easier to blend it in. So if you stop off right here in a large area and it started to dry, and then when you work wet paint into the dry, it's going to get that blotchy ridge. So you work stopping in a little small area is much better if you can do it. Kind of like house painting, it's the same kind of philosophy. Get a little area outside the cat. I'm also going to do her, her sleeves. Uh, I'm going to do the background first. And then I'm going to meet this up. So, so notice I'm not going to overlap it because that would create a darker area where they overlap. Just like that first blending technique I showed you yesterday, where you overlap to intentionally build up shading, I don't want to do that here. So I'm just meeting it right up to the edge without going over it. And then I'm going to um, put a glaze on her arms. How many coats will you put on this whole thing? <laughs> oh, maybe 20, 30. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But not all in the same area. Some places get more than others. So the face could have many, many layers, but it might just be in little nuances. So you don't have the same amount of layers over the whole entire thing. But if I have a simple portrait, with one person on it, I can get that done sometimes in about 10 hours. But 
if it's something like this, it's going to take a lot longer, of course. And when you look at this sweater, that's covered too, right? You did do a sweater front. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's just Could the same be. as the background. I just missed that little spot right there by the cat. And the window is shining right on this, so it's a little harder to see what I've done. It's kind of all shiny as I look at it. I don't think you went all the way down on the right side. On this side, yeah. I think you stopped right about mid-hour. You mid stopped right about this elbow. Oh yeah, there's a little spot there. It is oh no, I'm all in the background. The background? Hard to see. Hard to see. You didn't do the background all the way down there on him. No. You just have to get on this other side. You like, need to go all the way down to the bottom of the painting though. You no, know. that, that I did do. Oh, it's did just it? really light. Yeah. Wow, it didn't say it at all. Yeah, it's just really light. So that's kind of how we start, really, really light, um, just so that you know where you're going. Um, if you make any mistakes, you can easily change it, change direction. Um, you can get a good sense of smoothness, because if you have any areas that are a little bit blotchy, as you put your next layer on, you can have your brush stroke going in a kind of a different direction, and you can smooth it out. So. Yeah, it probably looks like I hardly did anything, but that's how you want it to look. You want the first glaze to be super, super light, and then each glaze can get a little bit darker, a little bit darker, so that by the time you get towards the second half of the painting, your glazes are going to be like probably more like this, just to show you. It'll be more like that, much darker. But then you're also going to be applying them just in little select areas of the painting. So, so that is it for the first layer, but we're not done yet. <laughs> because while that's drying, I can also work now in other areas I'm like prepare. So I'm going to revive this again. Now the matte medium, is that, does it just make it translucent or does it dry quicker with the matte medium? Is there anything besides just a... It, it makes it translucent and it does also make it dry a little quicker because the layer is very, very thin. If you were to take, you know, the paint and apply it super thick, it's going to take hours to dry, right. especially in this humidity. But with the matte medium, it's such a thin layer, it dries pretty quick. And like when I paint in the winter, it's dry within just like five minutes oh, or really? less, just a couple minutes. Donna can that? attest to that uh, all the time. It dries on the second. Can you brush off the camera? Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of a glaze on the interior of her hair. And I'm just going to block in where I sketched here. So if you see this on the reference photo, those little dark areas, I want to get those established. I want to get that contrast established on her hair. I'm using the same glaze because it'll work for it. So I just try to try to use the same glaze as much as I can before I switch colors. Um, I do need to get this area here now with my smaller brush. I can cut it in better. This also is gray. That. If that were a warmer color, would you have used a uh, different, like something warm, like raw or dark? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, so I'm developing the value structure, but I'm also being aware of the, the color within the reference photo. Um, if this, if she were wearing green, I would not be using this color okay. for that. Um, now the interior of his mouth, is that something that you would take, work on now with the darkness in there or is that something you'll do totally separate? That's a good question and it's kind of based on you know the overall uh, color of the interior of his mouth. If he had a lot of uh, you know his gum showing, um, I might not, but I do see you know quite a bit of gray in there. And you know his teeth are not white, 
you know, they're in shadow. So, you know, I can do that. Also, I can do their eyes. Um, which, yeah, her so eyes are quite dark. little features like that go into you. Okay. What's that? The little small features like that go into They're layered in also. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I can actually use this glaze on the shadows of her shirt. Even though it's red, the shadows are not vibrant red. If you look at the color, it's more of a grayish brown, isn't it? Can you see it? Yeah. So this actually will yeah. work for that. Yeah. As I'm developing the value structure. Um, so now let's switch to this round brush. And I'm going to establish the color of her eyes. Now her eyes are blue, right? But they're not they're not blue like this, are they? No. They're not. They're, they're more of like a grayish blue. So, his eyes as well. And I can't quite tell what the colors. I'll have to ask the client because that photo really altered it. I'll have to see. But they could be either dark blue or brown. But hers are, are blue, dark blue. So, I'm going to use this. Again, I'm going to go light because I want to have a chance to develop a little bit of shading in her eyes. Plus, if I were to go really dark with her eyes right away, then I'd have this really dark area on the painting. It would stand out like a sore thumb, and I wouldn't be able to accurately measure my values with that. Something, something that can happen to you if you don't get all that water off the brush, it can leak into your glaze. That's kind of what's happened. I'm going to set this on my lap. Sometimes I'll go like this and I'll wipe off my brush a little bit more so I can get that water that drips into the ferrule of the brush. Because if you don't get that, then it makes your glaze really watery and I'm having a little trouble blending it right now. So even though, you know, I've been painting for many years, things don't always work out perfect in my paintings. There's times that I have little mistakes and I'm like, oh, okay. But I have a confidence that God will help me to fix it. And I just stick with it and don't give up. And it turns out. Um, now I'm going to put the little blaze here for his eyes. Just kind of darken that area again. But like you were saying, Bettina, we're also going to put in a little bit of uh, glaze for that mouth area. And primarily, I'm going to put it on the pens right here. Again, I'm going very, very light. Now, I'm not filling the whole thing in because there's some shading on the interior there. Now, I wiped off my brush because the glaze is a little too thick. I'm dabbing it as well. Anytime the glaze looks like it's just a little too thick, you can dab it, and then it becomes a little easier to work with. I'm going to zoom out and just kind of take a look at it. So, yeah, I think. I think that's basically everything I want to do in this stage. Now, to me, her lips look like they're bluish in the dark. The darkness is that not? Her lips look blue. To me, bluish. Here. Yeah, are they not? Sort of not. I may be wrong. Her no, her her lips are are kind of a pinkish red. Okay. Maybe a little cooler a tone than what some. What about the shadow that goes along her jawline? Is that something that you would put in with this base coat, or would you wait on that? On the right side. Yeah, on the left side of her face? Uh, it's kind of borderline. It's borderline because the color has a little more warmth in it. Okay. Yeah. But I if, if I did, I'd have to just do a very, very light like application. I mean, just that much. Because what happens is, is if you put in too much of this color, which is a cooler color, mm -hmm. it's going to cancel out the warmer tones. Yeah. 
And once we get away from that, we start getting into some raw or dark and some warmer tones, and I don't want to mess up that. But just that thinnest, thinnest part is the only area where I can get away with okay. it. So that's really it for this particular layer. If you guys want to go ahead and do that with yours, uh, I would say maybe in about half an hour or so, um, I'll show you the next step. Okay.